So um, I do uh, some commercial work. I do some narrative work. I do some music videos. Um, but basically, I'm a filmmaker. Um, and so that is a representation of some of the projects that I've been working on in the past year or so. Um, but the reason that I show you that um, is, is specifically because I want to talk about empathy in the context of the process of making work. Um, so when we talk about empathy, I think it's helpful to actually talk about the opposite of empathy, which is ego, in my opinion. Um, so there's two ways to make things. There's a way to make things from a sense of um, being present in the moment, um, and being reactive, being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes, in someone else's emotions, and be able to see outside of your own perspective um, and use that as a way to be present, be real, and to make substantial work. Um, the opposite way of doing that is to make something from a place of ego. And really, when I say ego, what the ego wants and what the ego is concerned with is the future. Are people going to like what I'm making? Is this going to be, how is this going to positively or negatively affect my career? Um, and it is all the ways that we think when we're actually trying to make something about the future. I'm worried about this, I'm worried about that. And a lot of times that worry and anxiety causes us to be perhaps dictatorial, dogmatic. You do this, you do that. Um, it's, it's a place of insecurity. So. Um, when I was thinking about doing this talk, I was like, OK, OK, OK. This reel's from 2014. So I need to like get all this stuff. I've been doing some really great stuff. I'm like, this, this, the, the newest project in this reel is like a year old. So like, I'm way better now. I'm way better. I've got all this great stuff. And so I was sitting up and going, like, OK, I've got to put this in, do this, and cut and cut and cut and cut. And the reality is, is that um, I just wanted you guys to think I was awesome. And when I look at this work from a place of ego, I go, that's crap. Like, I'm so much better than that now. Like, look at how I frame that. Look how I move the camera. That's like rookie stuff. Like, I don't do that anymore. I'm way better now. But the reality is, is that um, I think the, in the first context of talking about empathy is um, I think that we need to be able to have empathy for ourselves. Um, we need to look at what we, we are doing um, and to be able to say, hey, I don't see a guy making that work up there. I don't see, I don't, I don't want to look at my past self, my past work, and say, like, that's terrible. Like, what were you thinking? You're a horrible human being. Like, you're never going to work again. Nobody's going to hire you. What I want to say is that guy who made that work a year ago was, like, in a different place than I am now. And look, he was right on the brink of getting to work with some cool people to do some cool things. And yeah, the camera movement, a little sloppy. But you know what? Like, you needed the sloppy camera movement to, to understand the difference between sloppy and subtle and better. And that it's a process to go from I'm doing this to I'm doing that. And that we need to be compassionate, empathetic to ourselves that are on this journey of getting better. So I think for me, one difference between empathy and ego is this empathy asks the question and ego screams for the answer. So if you find yourself being comfortable asking the questions, then you're working from a place of empathy. If you want the answers, what are we doing? How is this going to affect? What can I do? Like, it's that very like dogmatic, I want this to be this way. That is a place of ego. So today I'm going to talk about empathy and context of three things. One is empathy for yourself, the next is empathy for your collaborators, and the third is empathy as it relates to your clients. My idea of um, kind of being present and in the moment um, is that when I create from a place of empathy, that is my way of trying to create work that matters. I think that that's everyone's goal. If I'm just going to assume that that is your goal as designers, as developers, as artists of some kind, even as a doctor, as a lawyer, as an architect, our desire is to make something that has substance, that connects to someone else, that really makes you feel welcomed into this world that you did not know about. Um, that is my goal as a filmmaker. And for me, that process is, is empathy. Um, whereas 
I, th I think that when you see someone's work and it makes you feel crappy about yourself, um, you see someone's work and you go, man, I could never do that. Like, I'm, I'm a terrible human being. That they are, a lot of times, if you th be, the general idea would be think about advertising. Most advertising, when you watch advertising, makes you go like, man, I'm like, I feel bad about myself. Like, um, that means it's being created from a place of ego. It is saying, like, I'm better than you are. I'm different than you are. There's a division between you and I, and I'm on the better end of that division. Um, and that is something that I never want to be a part of, is making work that makes people feel disconnected. Um, so when I look at my reel, I feel that sense of ego popping up. I want this to be better. I want this to be better. Um, but I feel like the, the real work as a filmmaker is to learn how to be kind to yourself. So they say that uh, filmmaking is the uh, ultimate team sport. Um, because as a filmmaker, I cannot do anything without 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, 100 other people. It requires an intense amount of collaboration. Um, and there is the kind of, I, I'm sure as you have, the idea of the director who's the dictator, walks around saying, do this, do that, do this, do that. Um, and that is like, it's an old way of working. Um, that is not the way to create meaningful, substantial work. Um, with the filmmaking team, your core filmmaking team, the job is really understanding what each of the people that come to the table, what, they, what is required for them to be present and to be um, in the moment and what is required from them from a skill standpoint and a technical standpoint so that they can execute their job. So as a filmmaker, I may have a director of photography, I may have actors, I may have um, any number of crew people whose job is to hang the lights, to do the sound, to make sure that all the things that are happening so that when we say action, all the pieces are moving forward as we're sailing the ship together towards that goal. And in terms of, of how to best build people up and to make sure that as the director we're steering the ship in the same direction, the key is to have empathy with your collaborators, understanding what has been required and what is being asked of them as you move forward. Um, and that is really the way to kind of make sure that you're creating a team as opposed to as a dictator saying, you do this, you do that, you do that. Um, your ego in that moment when you're <laughs> feeling um, unsure, because what's going to happen is you're, you're, you've got 50 people standing there looking at you, you start feeling uncomfortable, and then you start saying, hey man, like, I, w what are you doing? Like, you were supposed to put this light up, like, you need to do it right now. Um, and that insecurity and that fear starts bubbling up, and then you start kind of arbitrarily cutting things and moving things and being a dictator. Um, that is creating from a place of ego. And I think that, um, you know, as a filmmaker, <laughs> um, you, cannot, you cannot let that fear dictate the things that you make. Um, so um, I think the... The best way to say this. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I think the, the, the reason I feel very passionate about this subject because I feel like um, life's too short to put crappy stuff out. Um, and the, the reality is that so many times we are all focused on the product that we're going to make. What is the final product? Um, what is the, uh, the thing that we don't realize that the process is where the beauty happens and that the product is the byproduct of the process. And if you don't pay attention to the process, you don't focus on the process, who cares? I don't care if you come up with an Academy Award winning, Oscar nominated, amazing film that sells 100 million tickets and you change box office history. If you have been a terrible person to work with, if the process of making that film throughout every step of the way has been damaging, has been hurtful, has been a, 
a difficulty for everyone around you, then I don't care what the product is. You are a failure. You have failed to make something substantial and something beautiful and something good to put out into the world. And so that is empathy. Empathy is the way that we go from step to step to step to step to step. And if the product is awesome, it's a result of everyone being present, being in the moment, and joining together to work towards a common goal. And the focus on the goal is the way that we damage everybody else around us. And that is unacceptable to me. So for me, as I've started with a camera and a, my buddy who's a musician who's not an actor, and now, last week I was on a set with 175 people, that movement from me and a camera to 175 people has been a dangerous move because at every step of the way, there is an opportunity to say, I'm awesome, this is amazing, look at me, I deserve to be here, I deserve the things that are happening, as opposed to saying, I am present in the moment with the guy in the camera, I'm present in the moment where there's six or seven of us, and at every step of the way, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know, and I have to go to my key collaborators and say, hey man, I've never actually directed an actor before. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Like, how do I, how do I get us together and steer this ship towards the final goal, which is the story that we're trying to tell? And I, it requires a presence and an honesty as we move along in each one of those steps that I have found to be essential to arriving at the destination, which is a beautiful relationship along the way with all the people that we're working with. So it's a subtle difference between saying, we're headed for this goal and we're gonna make something amazing versus we're in this together and we're going to figure it out every bit as we go. This fall, I had the opportunity to work with an actress who's won an Academy Award. Um, and it was terrifying. I was scared to death. Um, I didn't know, because I've been playing in my sandbox, and my sandbox is pretty small. Um, and she's playing in a sandbox that's very, very different. In fact, she came, her sandbox included a, a director, she's working on a film right now that will get nominated for Academy Award this year. Like, and she came from this director's studio where they were doing voiceover to my dinky little set to play the lead part as an actress, a single mom who's having a tough time. It's a music video, it's no big deal. This is no big deal. She's, we are in rural G Georgia, uh, this little town, and she's like holed up in like a day's in or something. Um, and I go to meet her for the first time and I say, hey Virginia, um, you know, I'm Ryan, like I'm, I'm really thankful that you're here and um, you know, I, I, I got to be honest, I don't exactly know how this works. Like, you know, I don't have a trailer for you. We don't have a car to pick you up from the airport. Like, craft services is, you know, my buddy's going to run to the convenience store and grab you some water. Like, I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't exactly know how this is going to work. And she said, Ryan, she said, don't worry about all the other stuff. Don't worry about the fact that I was on this guy's set. Don't worry about the fact that I'm leaving here and going on this other guy's set. Um, don't worry about the statue. Don't worry about all that stuff. It's you and me. When the camera's rolling, it's you and me. And that, to me, was the most beautiful gift that anyone has ever given me, which was the reminder that she is not concerned about her ego. She's not concerned about the car the stuff, the I can't believe this little joker guy is doing this music video, why did I say yes to doing this thing? It's probably a favor to somebody and oh my gosh. Um, she is saying, I'm here, I'm present, we're in rural Georgia, no big deal. Let's go out and tell this story. Um, and I think that that was a beautiful example of what the difference between empathy and ego is. So there is one moment in this uh, music video in which um, she's a single mom, she uh, is having a hard time, and I need this kind of like stylized moment where 
she look at, she's looking directly at the camera. I'm operating the camera, and I say, all right, Virginia, here's, here's the thing. We're going um, to do this thing, and like, this is like kind of not linear. It's not connected to the story, but like, I really need you to like, bring it in this moment. I need like, emotion. This is the moment when everything comes cascading over, and like, I'm going to use this shot for this. Um, and she looked at me, and she said, I need just a minute, and then let's do it. She stepped out for a minute. She came back, and she looked at me, and she said, OK, you and me, let's do it. And I want to play you the entire clip of this. I put some music under it, because you're not going to be able to handle just looking at her with no music, which is what I had to do and my crew. <laughs> We're standing there. There is no music. There is nothing. The lights are kind of going. We're in this little town. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and she is looking directly at the camera. Uh, uh, responding. So I'm going to play it with a little bit of music. This is literally from the time I rolled the camera till I cut the camera. I'm not going to show you how we use that clip in the film. Just two seconds. We used a blip of it. We overlaid a bunch of stuff. That moment where she wipes like this, walks out, I'd already said cut. So that was her actually walking out of the scene. We use that part in the film. The point is, I'm not going to show you how we use that, because that, that is filmmaking. That is like the only thing we have are the moments, the takes. That moment where it's she and I, where she's on camera doing that thing directly in front of the camera. How it all gets cut together and all the bits and the bobs and I need the thing and the whatever and the da 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 da. Here's the final video that premiered on this and it got so many views and blah blah blah. It doesn't matter. Absolutely doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that it's a collection of moments like that over time building together. And it's my job as the director to help everyone know this is the direction we're going, put my arms around everybody and say, let's go together. So for me, empathy and collaboration is key to making beautiful, substantial, meaningful work. Final thing I want to talk about is empathy and dealing with your clients. How many people are like, do work for hire stuff, like have clients on a regular basis? OK, most people. Awesome. My goal is to like, never have a client. Um, but like, there's very few people that get <laughs> have that opportunity <laughs> who have that opportunity. The reality is that um, in the same way that we're really not able to control, we are so out of control of the product that we make, uh, the only thing we have control over is the process thing we make. Oftentimes, we are not in control of the people that we're working for, right? They have a need. They've hired us for some strange reason, and we're trying to meet that need. And I think that, um, especially in filmmaking, especially in, I mean, for any of us who are doing kind of core creative work, having the bean counters, the money people, the agency people, the clients, the whoever involved who have something very specific that they need from you that is sometimes separate from the creative endeavor that we are trying to do, there leads to a lot of tension there. There's a, like all kinds of joke blogs about client, like, artist relationships. Um, but I would say that all of that, that feeling of friction, can be, that division is a, is a gap that can be bridged with empathy. Um, I was recently on a job, big commercial job. I got brought out to shoot second unit, which means that the A unit, the important people are off doing their thing, and that all the important agency people, all the important client people are with them, and all the less than important people, like myself, are off shooting a list of things that the A unit can't get. So, hey, can you go grab this thing, this thing, this thing, and this thing? And here's, a te here's your team of people, go grab it. Um, and in this particular job, uh, I was told neither the agency nor the client is going to be with you. Basically, they don't care. I just, the director said, man, I just need you to go get this thing. OK, no problem, man. No big deal. We get there, and um, not only is that not the case, there's three agency people, two clients, and they say, we're going to be with you the whole time because there's a list of things that we need to get um, that 
uh, we didn't tell the like production company and the other director, but like we've got a lot of stuff that we need to grab for a bunch of our needs related to what the big guys are doing. And so like I need you to get all of these things for me. And that was in direct conflict with what the director had told me he wanted me to get. Um, and so it was a moment in which I started feeling a little panicky, a little like, OK, this is like the biggest. There's 175 people on this crew. Like, I'm a little nervous. There's 35 people looking at me right now. Like, what am I supposed to do? Um, and the digital guy um, looked at me and said, hey, man, I just like, I really want to go um, explore the campus, and, and uh, we need to shoot this thing, and like, I just really want this shot. He was very, very arbitrary. Like, I want this one shot, not on my shot list, not what I'd been tasked to do, and he wanted to do it in the middle of prep, meaning we're supposed to be preparing for what we're going to get, and he wants me to go right now with the camera and go get this thing. Um, and I, the point is, is that a lot of times when the clients that we're working with, when the people that are paying us start getting arbitrary, saying, hey, man, I want you to do this thing. I need it. I just need this. Don't ask questions. I just want this. That that is, it's not that what they're saying is not important. It is important. But it's important in the sense that it gives you an insight into where that insecurity is coming from. Why do you want that thing? And why are you so arbitrary about wanting it? And the reality is, is that they may have a boss who's stepping on their neck saying, I want this thing from you. Like, it has to be this deal. Maybe they just got hired, and like, this is the first time that they're going to be out in the field getting stuff and delivering something to their higher-ups. There is some reason that they are feeling insecure about what it is that they want. And if you can bridge that gap from a standpoint of empathy, understand, hey, man, I understand that you need to deliver something awesome. What you are saying, the way that you're saying we should get there, I have a different idea, but I hear you. I hear what you're saying. Let's figure out a way to do this together. That moment where you can bridge the gap between somebody's arbitrary, I want this, to really hearing what it is that they need, is the moment in which really awesome stuff gets made. And in this specific instance, he said, I want this specific shot. It was a stupid shot. It was a dumb shot. And so we had our talent. It was a locker room. Uh, this is like a football thing. So there's a locker room. And the coach walks in. And uh, he says, I just want the coach to do this. And it's dumb. It's, it's not going to work. And so I looked at the coach and I said, hey, man, if you're going to come into this locker room, what would you do? Well, I'd come in and pick up some pads. Great. OK. Hey, digital guy, here's what I think we should do. Let's let him just come in. Explore the space. I'm going to just follow him with the camera. We're going to see what happens. All right, sounds good. Action. Follow the space, picks up the pads, closes the thing, walks out of the locker room. All this amazing stuff happens. Very natural, very real. And I turn around, we cut, and I turn around, and the digital guy is like almost crying. He's like, that's what I needed. I needed a real moment. Not later when we're shooting everything in the dark. I needed a real moment in which there's light in the locker room, and it feels like they're preparing for something. And it was in that moment that I realized he just needed to be heard. He needed to have his idea validated. He needed to realize that the creative team is not there to butt heads with him. We are there to figure out together how to make it from the treatment idea to a final product, and everybody gets to keep their jobs. Right? I think that that is something it's very easy to get focused on, the, like, I need to you know, be empathetic to my past self and make sure that I'm not worried about the future, and I need to be empathetic to like, my core team and my collaborators and all this stuff. The reality is, is that we need to be empathetic. We need to be present and to put ourselves in the perspective of everybody that we deal with on a daily basis when it comes to making work. And that, a lot of times, means the guys who signed a check. Um, I think that, um, you know, the reality is, is that <laughs> uh, this is it's hard work. Like, it's, this is hard work. Um, I know it's like, it looks like we're just like hanging out and we're like, I make movies. It's so cool. It's not cool, um, <laughs> actually. It's not cool at all. Um, a lot of times, it's like, it's, uh, it's social media, right? Like, you post a picture and you're like, oh man, that guy was like having so much fun doing such cool stuff. 
Yeah, man, you didn't see the mountain they had to climb up to get there. You didn't see the, the fact that they tripped and fell down and like, like broke their camera on the way down. Like, you don't see how someone got there, and you don't see where they went afterwards. Um, on the same job we just did, um, uh, the second unit stuff, it was very overwhelming. It's a huge job. And I finished the job, and I went back to um, the place I was staying, and I basically didn't sleep that night. I was like, I screwed up. I totally screwed up. <laughs> like, I didn't do as good as I could have. Um, it was a fast-moving situation. I don't think I responded properly. I don't think that client, I don't think I heard him enough. I don't think I was delivering what they needed. Um, it was different than what I was asked, what I was told was going to be, and I don't, I just, I screwed up, I screwed up, I screwed up. I'm never going to work again. That was my opportunity. I blew it. It's over. I'm done. And I didn't sleep that night. And the next day, I talked to the director, and the director, who was on set, cool as a cucumber. And this is like, this is no big deal. Like, I'm doing huge, you know, jobs all the time, whatever. And I talked to him, same thing. In fact, I almost went to the hospital because he thought he was having a panic attack. Like, okay? And it was in that moment that I realized, like, <laughs> like this is really difficult. Um, and that anxiety and the, like, oh my gosh, whatever, like, in some capacity, we all feel that when we're trying to put ourselves, we are putting ourselves into our work. Like, how could we not be filled with fear and anxiety and thinking, like, that was it. I blew my one chance. At every moment, I have felt that feeling from the time I was working with Tom on the little film all the way up to the stuff that I'm doing now. Every time I feel like, along the way, I'm blowing it, I'm not doing it, I'm worried, like, I'm never going to work, blah, 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 blah. All of that is my ego coming up and saying, people aren't going to think you're a badass, and you're never going to get paid to do this again. Um, and when the reality is, is, you step back and say, put my arm around the director, hey, man, we both couldn't sleep last night because we were so scared that we hadn't done a good job. It's because we care. It's because we care deeply about making substantial, impactful work. So, of course, dealing with all the, like, stuff around the edges comes with the territory, right? And that anxiety and that whatever is actually an indication. It's, it's, the, it's the same as the arbitrary client saying, I want this, I want this, I want this. That anxiety is a, is a sign of something deeper, which is, I really care. I want to make something meaningful. I, one of my favorite directors is this guy named Alejandro Inaritu. He's got a movie coming out called The Revenant. Looks incredible. Um, and he did uh, Birdman, won an Oscar for Birdman last year. And he recently said that he is quite concerned about the state of filmmaking uh, with the young people coming up. He's very concerned that our focus and emphasis on the results, on winning something, on getting the job, on being a big deal, on winning that Academy Award, is such a deep focus on our ego that he said, I'm terrified that our young people don't have any empathy. And empathy is how I make my films. This is a guy who's one of the best filmmakers in the world, said, I make my films using empathy, not my ego. Ego stands in the way of me making substantial, meaningful work. And that, to me, is all that needs to be said. If that is true, if that guy can say that that is true, then how much more than for us, for all of us, as we're working, as we're trying to make something impactful and substantial, is to do it from a place of empathy. Thanks very much.